You are considered an expert of sorts in RF. You teach at Harvard University. You also work for an environmental consulting firm. Can you explain to us what is RF and is RF harmful? Uh, RF stands for radio frequency waves and they are essentially just electromagnetic waves that are produced by uh, electric currents going back and forth in an antenna and they are electric and magnetic fields that can propagate from the antenna to a receiver. Uh, a typical receiver would have to have electrical wires and amplifiers and so forth to receive that kind of a signal the radio waves that are out there have very little in the way of an interaction with the human body. In your opinion, do some concerned homeowners have anything to be worried about when it comes to this new technology in smart meters that are getting installed on people's homes right now? Uh, yes, I've heard about that controversy and I think that generally speaking people are sometimes concerned when the new technology surfaces but I think the good news with uh, smart meters is that the radio wave technology that they use is the same technology that has been around for a long time. Uh, that is to say, we've been using radio and television for many decades and in fact using radio and television signals of fairly high power to beam information into our homes. In fact, when we turn on the radio or turn on the television and get the signal from an antenna, that tells us right there that those radio waves are getting into our homes. And we've lived with those radio waves for a long time and we have good record of indicating that uh, they're not harmful to us, they're not affecting our bodies in an adverse way. Unlike a lot of the appliances you can find in your home, like cell phones or microwaves, a lot of people are concerned with the fact that a smart meter is something you just can't shut off and like another appliance. Will that have any type of cumulative effects over a period of time? I know that power companies say that these smart meters are dormant 99% of the time. Is there a concern there? Well, number one, they are dormant for a lot of the time so that they're really not continuous. I mean, a typical radio and television station in your city or town would be on pretty much 24 seven as well. So you can't shut those signals off. Uh, certainly emergency radios from uh, fire and police and from AD aviation and from radar, those signals are on all the time. Uh, the standards that are set for radio wave frequencies and the kinds of levels that will be protective of health allow for the fact that you can be exposed to these continuously. I have received a few calls and emails from some homeowners that live in a condo or an apartment complex where they have a bank of meters on one wall on the outside wall of their home. Did these homeowners or these apartment dwellers have anything to be concerned about when there are a bank of say 10 to 20 smart meters on the outside of one wall with that RF being emitted from multiple devices? Well, you, you are correct that more meters will each one have a small radio in them, but remember that these radios are very weak in energy. They're about a quarter of a watt. And so typical um, walkie talkies are of the order of three watts of energy. Your cell phone is a couple watts energy. And so you can be in an environment where a lot of people are using their cell phones, where you have signals coming at you from uh, cell phone base stations and so forth, and those signals are still not above the health protective standards. Remember that the amount of energy needed to transmit information is really very weak. We're not trying to cause any kind of biological effects with these signals. We're only transmitting information, and the digital technology is able to do that with the least amount of energy. I've heard a lot of concerns also from people worried that this type of technology could cause things like headaches, it could affect children more than it could affect adults, could even interfere with pacemakers. Have you seen or heard of any documented proof in regards to this? Uh, the short answer is no. I mean, I've looked at the information that's available on smart meters per se, and indeed those signals are very low. But uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that in terms of cellular telephone technology, those very same frequencies have been researched up one side and down the other, and all of the questions that you raised there had been looked at, and people have tried very hard to determine whether there is any adverse effect of the type that you mentioned. And the answer is the signals are just too weak. They don't, uh, you don't see consistent effects of any kind at those levels of energy.
Dr. Velberg, when it comes to like cellular phone usage, when people are worried about the RF emissions from cellular phones, it seems like you can talk to one expert who says there's nothing to be concerned about, and there's some experts who say, well, there are some um, long-term data or even short-term data that shows that you could be more susceptible some some, to some types of brain damage when it comes to cell phone radiation. Is this something that you think will be debated about here from years to come, or depending on what set of data that you looked at, or if, whether you're looking at it um, with a keen eye or not? I think in the case of the cell phones, I mean, that, that issue has been investigated a great deal. And I think you're right. There has been some controversy as to whether long-term use might uh, lead to some sort of adverse effect. But I think in that regard, we have probably several lines of evidence that help us out. Uh, there have been a fair number of epidemiologic studies now where you actually look at populations that are using uh, cell phones and to the extent that we have records, particularly in Europe, they have very good records of what people's cell phone use is and you track those individuals and see what kind of diseases they may or may not develop. Those epidemiology studies are by and large negative. There's, you know, there's no effect. Uh, there also have been laboratory experiments where animals are exposed to radio waves as well, and people then look at the animal tissue very carefully to see whether you can see any kind of adverse effects. And those have turned out to be uh, negative with no, no signal that indicates an adverse effect. And finally, I think in terms of mechanism, that's where we again have a very key and reassuring result, and that is that the kind of energies that are going on in your body just by virtue of staying alive, in fact, are far more robust than the amounts of energies that can be put in by these radio wave signals. All right, Dr. Velberg, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your busy day and joining us from your office in Massachusetts. I appreciate it. You're welcome.